What up internet, this is Chris coming at you from sunny South Florida. You're about to watch one of my math videos, so I just want to let you know that the technology I use in this video can also be used in a live online web meeting. What does that mean? That means whatever is on my screen you can also see on your screen. That means that we can talk to each other live at the same time. That means that while I do an example for you, you can ask me questions if you don't understand anything. This is just like having a one-on-one -on -one tutor, except even more effective because everything is being recorded. So later on in the week, if you forget anything that we covered, you can go back, watch the video, and refresh your memory. I deliver the material in a way that's very easy to understand, even if you hate math. So if you would like to schedule a me meeting, please email me at chris at mathmeeting.com. Once again, chris at mathmeeting.com. I hope you enjoy this video, and take care. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to take the derivative of a function using the quotient rule. The first thing I want to let you know is when do you need to use the quotient rule? As you can see in the example f of x equals 5x divided by 3x cubed plus 7, you can see that that function can be divided into two separate functions, the numerator and the denominator. So one function is 5x and another function is 3x cubed plus 7. Whenever two functions are being divided with each other, that is your dead giveaway that you need to use the quotient rule. So before we get started with the example, I want to let you know the phrase that you need to memorize in order to take the derivative using the quotient rule. I wrote it for you on the top right hand part of the screen and it's low d high minus high d low all over the square of what's below. Once again it's low d high minus high d low all over the square of what's below. And when I write low that refers to the denominator. When I write high that refers to the numerator. Uh, when I write d high that refers to the derivative of the numerator and d low uh, refers to the derivative of the denominator. Um, so let's get started with our example. Once again we have the function 5x all over 3x cubed plus 7. So our low is just our denominator which is 3x cubed plus 7. Our high is our numerator which is just 5x. Our d high is the derivative of our numerator so the derivative of 5x is just 5. Our d low is the derivative of the denominator, so the derivative of 3x cubed plus 7 is just 9x squared. So now we're ready to take the derivative. So our low is 3x cubed plus 7. d high is just 5 minus high, which is just 5x d low, which is 9x squared. All over the square of what's below. So that's just 3x cubed plus 7 squared. The derivative of the function using the quotient rule, except our answer is not completely simplified, so we need to do some more algebra. The algebra in quotient rule problems gets extremely messy, so it's really, really important that you keep your work very, very neat so to avoid making any mistakes. So the first thing I want to do is distribute the 5 with the 3x cubed plus 7. So 5 times 3x cubed is 15x cubed, plus 5 times 7, which is just positive 35 minus 5x times 9x squared, which is 45x cubed. And the denominator stays the same. Now notice in our numerator, we have two like terms, our 15x cubed and negative 45x cubed, our like terms so they can be combined. So I'm going to write my 35 first and then combine my 15x cubed and negative 45x cubed which turns out to be negative 30x cubed and our denominator stays the same. Now we need to factor the numerator because you see that the 35 and the 30x cubed both have a 5 in common. I'm going to take out the 5.
then we're left with a 7 minus 6x cubed. And the denominator stays the same. And here we have our final answer. Now we have taken the derivative of the function using the quotient rule. Remember to keep your work neat because the algebra gets extremely messy. And when you take the derivative, low d high minus high d low, all over the square of what's below.